How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar. Now, today we're going to go through one of the most popular power stations in this size class, kind of that 1,000 watt hour to 2,000 watt hour power station, and that is the Jackery Explorer 1000V2. Now, Jackery was the first or one of the first on the market with power stations, but have they fallen behind? Now we're not going to really go through and count the different plugs and the USB outlets. Those are easy enough to find yourself, but we're going to do a little testing and add it to our master spreadsheet that I'm using to compare popular units from Anchor, EcoFlow, Blue Eddy, and other top competitors so I can pick the right unit for a project we have it coming up down in Haiti. So let's do some testing on inverter losses and then also to see how efficient it is running a 500 watt load. And then we'll wrap everything up into one spreadsheet that you'll be able to download so you know that you're making the right purchase decision on your own project. So while I finish up the idle inverter loss testing and also just the inverter efficiency testing, let's talk about the solar input. That is a main criteria when I'm buying portable power stations because I want to charge them as fast as possible with as much solar power as possible. Now the Jackery Explorer 1000 V2 is actually the least capable of the bunch. It can only bring in 400 watts of solar input and that is pretty much as low as it goes for this size class of portable power stations. Others in this lineup are at 500 watts. Some of the higher end ones which are more expensive are 1000 watts and the one on the end, the Anchor Solix C1000 which we're testing for the first time today can actually do 600 watts. And Jackery seems to focus on kind of the beginner or amateur market where they give you a simple plug and play design. You're gonna need a DC7909 conversion cable that's gonna take you to MC4 connectors. Or if you stay within the Jackery lineup, you can just get their solar panels and they're just gonna plug right in. This is gonna be 200 watts of capability on this one and 200 watts on the others. Having two different charge controllers to get to 400 watts is uncommon, but I think they are trying to align with the beginners, which just want to plug and play and don't necessarily want to understand what the voltage ranges are and also the maximum current. And then also for your reference, the Blue Eddy AC180 also uses a DC7909, but it gives you the voltage range and also maximum current. This one's the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus, a very capable unit, a little more pricey. It's gonna have two different XT60i adapters, which are really common in the industry that converts over to your MC4 connectors. And again, you have your voltage ranges and your maximum amperage right here. Each of these is rated to 500 watts. Now, similarly, the Delta II from EcoFlow, super popular unit, has one 500 watt XT60i connectors. And the Anchor Solex C1000 has a yellow, and that means it is an XT60, not an XT60i, even though you can use the same cable, plug that in, and it's gonna be compatible. It just doesn't have an extra pin that EcoFlow uses to switch between the types of connectors. Then you have your two voltage ranges, which it gives you two different ranges to get up to that maximum of 600 watts. Now I do understand if you're just getting started, all this terminology is super overwhelming. So you'll see a link in the description, or if you're on your TV, you can just scan this QR code. And I'm baking everything into one spreadsheet where you can compare side by side and see that it uses a DC7909 or an XT60i and kind of further research to make sure you're making the right choice because there is a ton of terminology and things you need to know to make sure you're not purchasing one that's not going to fit your needs. So let's go ahead and roll everything up and see how does Jackery compare with the other major brands. So today we actually added the Jackery, but I also purchased the Anchor Solex C1000. I wanted to see how that did and then compare it versus our past testing. So it's all one stop shop. Let me know, is there any rows that I'm missing that you guys want added? So it's just a more valuable resource for you. Also let me know, I just want to know more about the audience. Do you guys have solar panels on your home? Are you off setting your monthly power bill by having roof mounted or ground mounted solar? Let me know down in the comments. If you do not and it's something you're thinking about, you can see a link in the description. With a few minutes entering information on your home, you can get sizing for how many panels you're going to need and also what is that price after the 30% tax credit. Now remember, net metering and some state or local incentives make that a lot easier to get a reasonable 
five to seven year return on your investment. Once those go away, it's gonna be harder and harder to make sense out of offsetting your monthly power bill with solar. So you might wanna at least consider it sooner rather than later. And if that price looks attractive, they can also set you up with local installers and you can start the vetting process. So you're gonna land on the Google Sheet and it's gonna be actually on the Appliance List tab. Now this sheet is also to kind of size out your demand. So we have a list of appliances and you can add your own appliances. If you need help quantifying the power demands and the energy draw over a 24 hour period, you can either use an energy watt meter like this one. You'll see this one link in the description. I've used this one for years and years, works great. This one's good if you're plugging it in for a day or two or seven days and just trying to quantify what does your refrigerator use? What's the maximum power demand? It works good. Or if you wanna step it up, these little Emporia smart plugs, they actually have an app and have data logging capability. You can buy a four pack of these pretty cheap and really let those log data, see your graphs go hourly, daily, monthly, and have a lot of breakdown from the Emporia app, which is really good. So you'll see those links in the description. And then you can add those appliances to this list if you need to add some that aren't included. Then we just go ahead and do the drop down. We would select additional demands. Maybe I have a microwave oven that I wanna add in. It's gonna add your continuous power, surge power and daily energy consumption. Then that starts to look at your use case and you do need to update your idle consumption to the next tab. So you need to see, hey, I really want to use that Anchor Solix C1000. So you would update this number to make sure that your total daily energy consumption, I know that's a little confusing, but you'll see once you get in the spreadsheet and then that helps you kind of line up, okay, which unit am I looking at? And then here's the master list of all the units that we are considering for the Haiti project. Again, I'm using this one specifically for a project coming up, bunch of different eco flows, and then going into even Harbor Freight Predator 2000, which I think is actually discontinued now, and the two units that we tested today. Now the two main pieces of data that you won't find online that we've been testing out is the inverter efficiency. I put a 500 watt load with a heat gun on that, and then I test it through that energy meter and say, how many watt hours am I actually pulling from the 120 AC outlet compared to the battery overall capacity? And that's how I get my 84%, 83%, or all the way up to 89% like we saw on the Jackery today. So from our testing today on the actual inverter efficiency, we saw 88% for the Anchor Solix and then the 89% for Jackery. Both those are fantastic and actually best in class from what I've tested across the Blue Eddy, the AC180 at 86%, and then better than the EcoFlow products like the Delta 3 Plus and the Delta 2 that I've tested. So very encouraging results there but it's not all roses, especially for Jackery. When it comes to idle consumption, and this is critical for me because I actually might be only using a small amount of power to do some lights, maybe a Wi-Fi router or a small load. So the idle consumption just to keep the AC outlets live is critical because that can be a big part of it. And if we look at the anchor, after testing that, and I just let them sit, I make sure the AC outlets stay on, and then every 12 hours, I document what the battery percentage is. I get a trend line, and then I get the actual trend line equation, and that's what I say, okay, every 24 hours, I use lose this much battery percentage, and then I multiply that battery percentage times the battery capacity in watt hours, for Anchor, that is 1,056. For Jackery, that is 1,070. And this is where I'm getting how many watt hours am I gonna lose just having the inverter on? What is that idle consumption loss per 24 hours? Anchor actually did really well and it's some of the best in class. It ranks up to what I saw on the Blue Eddy AC180 and also the EcoFlow Delta II, which both did really good but Jackery did not do good, not good at all. This is kind of a showstopper for me, all the way up to 428 watt hours, losing about 40% of its capacity just to have the inverter running per 24 hours. That is a no-go. Additional rows I've added 
is information if it comes with the solar cables that you need? And then also, is it Wi-Fi, yes or no? Not all of them are. Actually, the Blue Eddy AC180 is not Wi-Fi. That's a bummer because that probably would be my favorite unit if it had Wi-Fi. Let me know down in the comments, what is your favorite unit? Whether you're taking these results into consideration or not. Right now, in terms of my pro project, because of the demands, I'm probably gonna look at the Delta II Max, but I would seriously consider the Blue Eddy Elite 200 V2, even though I haven't tested that one in person. Now, it does depend, one of these brands hopefully is gonna sponsor our project so we can support as many Haiti homes as possible and get them a power supply to do a lot of neat things. So make sure that you're subscribed to our channel as we'll give you a lot more updates on this project that we have coming up. And it's a pretty great project that we wanna have completed this year and hopefully power at least 10 homes down in Haiti. Now, if you need a little more help on the solar panel side of things, we've done a ton of testing there as well. Here's one that'll break down foldable 100 watt panels and they are simply are not all created equal and here is a roundup of rigid 100 watt panels and again that will have a common spreadsheet or resource that you can use on your own project so thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones take care